All right, passengers, please make sure your seat backs and tray tables are in their full upright position and buckle up because Hijack is going to be a bumpy ride of twists and turns in this tense new Apple thriller that I'm dying to see more of because these first two episodes are like trying to eat soup during turbulence, complete chaos. We're going to be breaking down these episodes weekly, pointing out small details you may have missed, theories about what the bigger picture is, along with our reaction and review of events. So please like and subscribe to ensure your weekly ticket on J. Buck Airlines for the smoothest journey. Spoilers inbound, so if you haven't watched, the pilot recommends finding an exit right now. Otherwise, thank you so much for clicking this. A clear skies for today's flight. So settle in as we get into the first two episodes of Hijack. These first two episodes are packed full of introductions and setups. So there's going to be a lot of who is who in this first section. But Hijack is following our main character of Sam Nelson or Nielsen, played by Idris Elba. Now, not much has explicitly been revealed about this character, but we know he is a father who the pair have divorced with his ex-wife, Marsha, having moved on for months now, seemingly dating a British detective named Daniel. However, it appears Sam still has feelings for her and believes he can mend their separation, which honestly, after this flight in this series, I, I have an inkling that that could happen. But we find out via Marsha and her son that Sam is essentially a corporate negotiator on steroids, helping big corporations when a merger or buyout comes to be. So already with this information of this super intelligent negotiator unknowingly on the plane with these hijackers puts Sam in a great position to just f around with these people without them actually knowing he is pulling the strings and really driving the plane. On the other hand, by the end of episode one, it is revealed who the group of hijackers are. It appears Stuart is the lead man with the plan, followed by Jamie and Lewis, who appear to be love interest, Jaden, who was later tackled and lost his gun in episode two, and finishing the group is Terry, Hawaiian shirt man who basically set this powder keg off a little bit early. Now, aside from the few attributes I've just listed, we know almost virtually nothing about them or their plan at this time, which sounds fishy. Honestly, we don't know why they want the plane. There's no signs of it being used in an attack, trying to divert it somewhere, etc. But I want to say that they have some sort of connection with Alec, who hasn't really shown his hand yet. The reason I say this is because we saw him rushing through security, almost missed the flight, and was acting a bit sketchy during this time, and Jaden grabs one of the gun bags from the bag that Alec stowed in the overhead compartment. So I'm curious uh, if he's actually going to be revealed to be the mastermind rather than Stuart, because in a blink and you miss it moment earlier in episode one, you can see the five guns x-ray scanned passing Neela's security measures. Plus, when Alec is boarding the plane, he is talking to someone telling them to make the trade. Make the trade. Yeah, I've got to go. So Alec could be the huge player in a corporate negotiating things, maybe a merger or buyout, therefore having a connection to Sam. Heck, he could be Lex Luthor to Sam's Superman, both of them flying to the same business meeting in London, but being on opposite sides of the coin. A potential theory that I think we'll probably talk about later. Filling out the remaining roster of the plane seems to be the team of field hockey girls, one of which, you know, found the stray bullet in the bathroom that we'll talk about in a little bit, a husband and wife and their two children, an elderly couple, of which it appears the husband may be some sort of a priest or pastor, a mid-20-year-old yoga influencer type woman who is ironically reading a book called Reasons to Stay Alive, which no doubt spells bad fortune for her. I'm calling it now an eccentric Cruella de Vil artsy type woman, and lastly, this tattooed man with some pills. Again, we know just as little about all of these other passengers as the hijackers, but part of me wants to say that this tattoo man is, honestly, he's an air marshal. Hey, it could happen. Something about the way he responds to the girls, talking about the bullet that they found in the bathroom, and wanting to help the older woman before takeoff, gives me the vibe that he's there to help. We'll have to wait and see, obviously, but drop in the comments who you think is the sketchiest passenger so far and what theories you have. 
As for the plan, we know according to Sam that they had to kick things off early. This is because Jamie accidentally left a bullet on the floor of the bathroom for the young field hockey girl to find. Terry was trying to cover things up, but obviously it got out of his hands, so they had to move things up. And I want to say that the initial time that they actually wanted to kick this plan into motion was probably when the plane was crossing over into a different country, like in episode 2, just so that they'd have a small window of opportunity when switching over air traffic controllers of, you know, tracking them. A window of opportunity. Again, so far the hijackers' plans are vague, but whatever they want, it seems that they have done their intel because they knew Colette Fisher, the blonde flight attendant, would be on this plane and also have a connection with the pilot, Robin. Part of me wanted to say initially that Colette was all in on this originally because she normally did not fly this flight and the crew kind of hinted at this by asking her why she was flying transatlantic and she didn't really know how the pilots liked their coffee. But we later find out that her and the pilot Robin had been having an affair. Colette is essentially used as bait and then finds out that Robin actually has a family, so it looks like both her and Robin were being a bit sketchy about who was actually what and what they were actually revealing. A lot of this seems to be happening, honestly, with everyone in this series right now. Sam is the major player shaking things up. Heck, the coconut water even says, get ready to shake things up right before and after showing Elba's character on the plane. We know he's slowly but surely gumming up the hijacker's plan, first with the text, him giving the loose gun back to them, agreeing to help them, removing the pilot only to communicate with them via the pirate video game, which is a great in-your-face piece of symbolism of the game they are playing is about pirates, obviously pirates taking over a ship, while the real-life pirates have taken over the plane. We know Sam's initial text actually went through, which started a chain reaction of the ex-wife and detective notifying others, and from the looks of the end of episode 2, the London Air Traffic Control Center knows something sketchy is going on because of the slick move pilot Robin pulled, slightly varying the heading of the plane off 3 degrees. So clearly, ground support is catching on to all of these hints and details, but I'm curious if the hijackers are going to be smart enough to actually catch on to this small heading change and then fix it themselves to get back on track. Obviously, the plane scenario isn't the only mystery going on, but the mystery of the security scanner Neela, her family, and the death of Abdullah at the end of episode 2 is maybe just as big. Like I mentioned earlier, she either purposefully or accidentally let Alec through with a bag full of guns. If purposeful, it's got to be because she knew her family was in trouble and was instructed to do so. But why is the biggest question? Why her, her family? And what was the deal with the cleaners that Abdullah unfortunately came face to face with at the end of episode two? Obviously, there is a much bigger conspiracy happening, and I'm thinking Neela was being blackmailed, therefore allowed for the security pass, and the cleaners were there to tie up the loose ends. However, Abdullah was not supposed to be there, and with it being his birthday and him making some birthday plans with his wife, she is no doubt going to alert the authorities about him missing. Again, another loose end of the hijackers, or whoever is behind this needs to probably worry about. At this point, this series is ripe full of potential theories, who, what, when, where, why, and how, but I think the biggest thing is Alec is going to be revealed to be like the main guy in charge, and all of this has to do with some sort of corporate merger business trade or something. Again, he mentions a trade on the phone earlier, brought the gun bag on board, and Sam would be the opposite essentially in the corporate negotiation game. Unfortunately, everything is a little too vague at this point to 100% no. But I think the ground crews are going to think that Sam is somehow involved, even though he is actively working against them. The reason I say this is because he said that he would help them, he gave the gun back when it was knocked loose, but ultimately allowed Alec to board the plane. He persuaded the gate attendant to allow him on board, therefore setting up all of this in motion. So if they had to go back and look at the security cam footage, it may appear that he is in fact working for them, if that is, Alec is identified. Also, most of the crew thinks that Sam has sided with the hijackers, even though we as viewers know that that is not the case. 
But straight up from these first two episodes, I almost can guarantee that this is going to be a bang up great series. The slow trickle of characters, information, expanding the story from the plane to the family to the ground crew and now the other air traffic centers. They are juggling a ton with these first two episodes, but I am lapping up everything because, again, it's done in such a perfect, methodical way to keep viewers interested. Like, the x-ray scanner is the perfect attention to detail to almost misdirect you. But it's the intrigue and tension that's gripped me so far. Every single move of Elba's Sam character is like betting all in. He's betting it all only to win again and again. Like the video game Captain Message idea was absolutely brilliant. And the idea that this is kind of sort of happening in real time through the seven episodes is almost taking a page from the, you know, 24 series. Maybe there is too much happening because at this point, the captain of this series needs to reveal some secrets because not only is the plane shenanigans a mystery, but what about that ending of episode two with Neela and Abdullah and the cleaners? I am beyond confused, but in a great I need to know what is happening next week confused. Hijack has started off wonderfully, and I'm just curious. I'm curious and hopeful that they're going to stick the landing. Anyway, that is everything for the first two episodes of Hijack. I am digging this thriller series so far, but let me know what you thought of these first two episodes in the comments below. Is this starting off as just another predictable series? Or are you completely strapped in waiting for the snack cart to come around? Please, again, in the comments, let me know. Thank you again for watching through all of this. We're getting back into the swing of ending, explained, and breakdown. So please like and subscribe if you haven't. It would be much appreciated. Plus, guess what? Giveaways are coming soon. So board the J Buck Studios plane. And if you haven't, check out all of my other social media accounts for my Shorts and Clips YouTube channel, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, everything please and thank you tons of new stuff on all of those platforms we're gonna have a run rabbit run ending explained tomorrow so stay tuned otherwise that is everything i got for you much love stay tuned and peace out dudes